Welcome everyone to a special September 2013 Cause Marketing Forum webinar made possible by MSL Group, which is entitled Take Your Retail or Consumer Products Cause Program to New Heights. My name is Megan Strand and I'm the Communications Director for the Cause Marketing Forum and I would like to thank all of you for being here today. I'm very excited to be joined today by Ann Earhart, who is Senior Vice President of Cause Marketing and CSR for MSL Group, as well as Sandra Hijikata, Chief Revenue Officer with the March of Dimes. Those of you who have heard Ann present before during a webinar or maybe at the Cause Marketing Forum conference know how generous she is with the tips and tactics she shares. So we are in for some great, great content today. We are also very fortunate to be going behind the scenes with Sandra's help on the very exciting initiative by March of Dimes called I'm Born To. Before I turn it over to Ann and Sandra, just wanted to go over a couple of quick housekeeping items. If you'd like to ask a question, please do so by typing it into the questions box on your GoToWebinar control panel. We will most likely save your questions for the very end, but we do encourage you to ask questions, so go ahead and type them in just as they occur to you. Each of you on the line today and everyone that registered will be getting a recorded version of this webinar as well as a copy of the slide deck you will see today on your screen. There's nothing you need to do except watch your email in the next day or so. We will get that out to you just as soon as it's rendered up. And I think that's it for the housekeeping items. At this point, I'm going to hand the presentation over to Anne Earhart. Thanks, Megan. I, I love being introduced by Megan because she's always generous in the kindness of her remarks as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so this is Anne speaking um, from MSL uh, today. Um, what I want to do is really talk specifically about um, direct-to-consumer cause marketing campaigns and some of the evolution around what we're seeing in the marketplace today. Um, we're going to try to speak to this topic in a way that's relevant for you if you're a company yourself trying to keep your cause promotions fresh um, or ensure that they achieve your sales goals or other, um, other goals, or if you're a nonprofit trying to gain insight into how a corporate marketer may think um, or how to give some tips and ideas for activating a partnership that's going to raise um, a lot of money um, and reach uh, mutual goals. Um, so just a quick background, at MSL Group and, and throughout my career, I focused on both developing campaigns for nonprofits that are attractive to companies and consumers, as well as work directly for companies looking to create cause marketing or social responsibility or social investment campaigns that engage a number of different stakeholders. Um, so I've worked across a broad spectrum of industries, but in, in the past couple of years, I've had the fortune of working um, on multiple clients that really fit within this consumer-focused world, particularly retailers and consumer products. Um, so we've worked for about a year, I think, Sandra, um, with the March of Dimes on um, the I'm Born To campaign that's really attracted uh, many retailers and consumer products, um, and also done a, a good chunk of work for retailers like Ann Inc., the parent company of Ann Taylor & Moss. Jockey International, Dunkin' Donuts, um, and consumer product side, we work for many P&G brands um, that are very purpose-led. Um, Kellogg's have done work for L'Oreal and others. So thought that putting this together based on insights from a lot of those sort of retailers and consumer products um, would be kind of fun. So what we'll do today is go through five trends um, and quickly highlight some marketplace examples of each, um, and then Sandra will pull through that case study from March of Dimes and their partners as sort of proof points um, for some of these principles. Um, so these cause marketing tips and trends, honestly, um, are going to be really, really grounded in general marketing concepts that are relevant to this set of companies and retailers. Um, so I truly believe in many ways that the best cause marketing activation that gains the most traction in the marketplace, raise the most funds, and, and really provide both business returns as well as social returns are going to be really grounded in the best general marketing activation. Um, it's, it's that simple. And of course, as a cause marketing specialist, I think a lot of great marketing strategies can be amplified through cause marketing. Um, so you'll see a grounding in general marketing principles um, throughout uh, these um, principles here. So the first we'll talk about is um, getting creative with messaging, particularly when you're talking about this type of company and this type of promotion. Um, we'll talk about incentivizing and creating some personal value for 
your consumers. Um, we'll also talk about going beyond sort of the visual, the visuals, um, and really looking at the whole shopping experience. Um, we'll talk about exploring three-way partnership deals, which we've been seeing more and more of. Um, and then lastly, you know, it's really important not to forget about internal communications and employee engagement, which can be easy to do. Um, when you're thinking about the consumer so much and that the consumer is so key, but it's important it's important to also think about your employees and associates. Um, so with that said, the first and I, I think the first step on the path is really um, realizing for these companies and brands, everything's grounded in consumer insights, and the creative and the messaging comes out of that. Um, this is really important to consumer marketers today. So whether they want to reach women or moms or millennials, you know, there's, they spend a, a good amount on trying to understand that audience, the psychographics, the behaviors, what's going to move them to engage with the brand, and develop real insights about that audience that really inspire their marketing campaigns and the creative imagery and the messages that go around it. Um, so creative is really key. There's testing that goes into it. Um, the savviest companies today are actually moving to marketing testing that actually measures green waves um, to identify positive reactions versus just what consumers may even say they feel about a product or message. Um, so the insights in that creative is, is so critical to these, to these folks. Um, so what does that mean for cause? I think all good things. I think cause can elicit a pretty positive reaction off the bat if it's clear and makes really good sense for both brands. Um, and B, I think it means that you have a lot of opportunities to figure out an appropriate cause fit for your brand. Um, so you want to come up with a marriage that feels right from the get-go and just doesn't take too many steps to really understand it. So um, there's a couple things that you can look at when you're looking for that alignment. Um, we all know, you know, audience alignment's got to be there. It's the cause doesn't resonate with or help you reach your target, a consumer company probably won't be doing that cause. Um, but you can also look at the brand's character, the essence, the tone, the personality um, of your brand and, and think about um, connecting with a cause that, that makes sense that way. Um, today, you know, a lot of us cause folks um, talk about really getting a business alignment and that being a great thing if somehow the core of your product or your business or mission is, is aligned with a the cause, then great. And you should look there, um, absolutely. But with consumer products and retailers, you may not find that connection necessarily with the actual business. So um, for Kellogg, you know, a breakfast company, a cause around breakfast actually makes a ton of sense. But you can also find that creative alignment simply in the focus of your words or a message um, or a campaign or something that ties just to the, to the product benefit or a specific equity that your brand has built up over time. So I'll give you a couple of examples. Um, so one of the ones I, I really liked um, that we came across is Autism Speaks and Build-A-Bear. So, Certainly the brand audience is a fit here around kids and family and that um, playful sort of personality and tone um, is a great alignment. But there's a lot of children's causes, you know, that would, that would probably fit. Um, but th with this particular cause, Autism Speaks, that symbol of the puzzle piece representing, among other things, um, the uniqueness of each child. While for Build-A-Bear, you know, each teddy bear is unique. Um, and there's some real equity for them in personalization and customization. So they created these tiny teeth um, for sale to benefit the cause with the message, Autism Speaks, each piece is unique. Um, so it really relates to both, that build a bear equity in the, in the personalization as well as the cause's important message and, and symbol. So I thought it was a clever way to play with messaging and, and make it really fit in a very clear way. Um, another one I'll just speak to here, um, is Snickers, um, you know, like it or not, Snickers has placed huge emphasis on their um, candy bars and as, as an answer to personal hunger pang. Um, a lot of us have probably seen the You're Not You When You're Hungry campaign, a multi-year, multi-channel ad campaign that's done some really, really interesting things with partnerships and other things. And, and in reading an article um, 
about it, the creative, the creative director on the campaign said, you know, Snickers has so much equity and satisfying hunger that you get endless material out of it. Um, so, so they can't, they tied to a cause not directly related to the business, the cocoa production or anything like that, um, but to their creative campaign. Um, and so a partnership was really developed with, um, with Feeding America and uh, Bar Hunger was, was born. So it's just an interesting way to, to align with a creative campaign and platform. Um, the second piece, again, really grounded in marketing principles and marketing strategy um, with the competition among, you know, retailers and consumer products today, promotional marketing, you know, really continues to be an important component especially if price and quality are equal among your competitive set, that um, brands often, you know, are looking to offer something to ensure that there's an engagement and, and try to sort of hook some more loyal customers. So um, add in some payoff for, for consumers. Um, but of course, you know, oftentimes that leads to, you know, so many promotions, so many deals that consumers can get a bit of um, sort of coupon fatigue. Um, and so that coupon or discount, you know, on its own, I have here, you know, may not be enough to get them off the couch these days and into the store. Um, but oftentimes, um, a cause or a social benefit also added to that promotion can be um, just the thing to entice folks to participate and move to purchase. So because I'm getting something for myself, plus I'm doing something good at the same time, um, it may be just enough. Um, so again, a lot of us cause geeks talk about you know shared value and gaining business value as well as social value. And now we're sort of adding the triple threat of personal value um, to the equation. So how do you do this? Um, you know, there's hard incentives like offering a coupon within the package um, that upon future use can also trigger a donation or some social impact or a retailer giving a coupon, you know, offered to bounce a customer back after they've donated at checkout, um, those sorts of things. And, and um, trust me when I say <laughs> we've seen enough cause marketing examples that have included these sort of incentives that outperform other cause marketing promotions that may not have um, a benefit tied to it or outperform the promotional marketing um, campaign um, that doesn't have a cause tied to it. So it really is that integration where um, some magic can happen from what we've seen. You can also tie cause promotions to loyalty points, chances to win, exclusive opportunities, that sort of thing. Um, and, and oftentimes there's softer, less tangible incentives like a one-to-one -one impact, um, something very shareable that, um, that just makes you feel good, about, good enough about the purchase that um, it moves you um, to action. So a couple of marketplace examples, and I did, a, I did a webinar on just this topic last year, so forgive me if I'm repeating some of my examples, um, but I love my client's example, um, the Ann Cares cards at Ann Taylor and, and Law the Ann Cares cards and Lost Cares cards, where you buy the card for $25, all, almost all proceeds go to the cause, plus you get a discount for a dedicated time period. Um, and so, you know, just lots of money goes to the charity since it's not product-based. It's not like you're selling a sweater that's got a high cost to produce. You're, you're selling the cost of this discount card. So it can prove that the custom, and, and the other thing that this, does, why I like this example, is because they can prove that the customers buying these cards, cards and, and using this um, cause promotion are, they're super customers. They're spending more, they're spending more multi-channel, they're shopping multiple brands. Um, when I say multi-channel, I mean online, in-store. Um, so, you know, it, it's, got, it's very trackable as well. Um, Annie's Pretzels, um, another retailer, you know, they're um, getting people to donate and they get loyalty rewards, good for food purchases in the future. It's a great bounce back offer that, you know, actually drives traffic. Um, so those are a couple of examples of the hard incentive. Um, the third uh, piece that we have here is really grounded in shopper marketing which is another really important marketing concept for these types of companies. Um, you know, it's, it's all about the shopping experience today. 
Um, we all have heard a lot probably around how consumers are shopping multi-channel, they're showrooming, meaning they might be price comparing in store, um, on their smartphones or shopping online and then executing purchases in store. Um, so, so shopper marketing and getting inside the heads of the shopper is more and more important today. Um, so it goes beyond just sort of the visual placement and the display, you know, putting the candy bars at the um, checkout to, to get those impulse purchases. It, it, it goes beyond and sort of needs to push this visual envelope. So with cause, I think you need to think about the exact same concept around that whole shopper experience. Um, so some of the ways that you can think about doing it is, is just like interesting displays for any product promotion are made to, to get attention in the right place at the right time. Don't think that cause on its own will just, um, you know, get, get into our hands um, without, you know, doing something similar. You, you still need to shove it in our faces, make sure it gets noticed and, and attention. Um, so you can also, the other thing cause does is allow you to do some real time tracking around the impacts that you're making. Um, particularly when the cause promotions are driven online, you can sort of show how many people have participated or how close you are to your goals, that sort of thing. Um, and then, you know, perhaps for retailer driven promotions or fundraising campaigns, you can even think of ways to put signage um, right in their hands through badges for participation, pins, stickers, you know, sort of moving billboards that get to spread that word of mouth. Um, you also want your causes um, to go multi-channel or paperless, just like other promotions, product promotions and such are going um, sort of paperless. You want to think about that for, for cause as well. Um, a couple of examples, um, when I say paperless or multi-channel, um, one that I'll know, uh, probably one of the, the most successful retail based cause marketing promotions that raises um, just a ton of money for its causes and nonprofit partners is the Macy's Shop for a Cause um, shopping pass. Um, and so not, not missing a beat, just as most promotions are going mobile, as I mentioned, this one um, is too, so you can now text a code and get the pass rate on your smartphone versus just purchasing it in store. So as, as such a successful campaign year over year, I'm sure going mobile will only increase usage. Um, also, you've got some very interesting displays here, if you can see them on your screen, um, around uh, Suave Turn Off the Tap promotion, really sort of in your face visuals, um, meant, made to stand out in Walmart. Um, I'm also a fan here of live interaction. Um, for some reason, you see it a lot with um, military causes around the 4th of July. I've, I've seen it actually at Old Navy when shopping, and uh, this example is Choice for Tots, um, definitely entice me to buy the flag t-shirt uh, for the cause um, when I see a veteran standing at the door. Um, and I know YoPlay has put its breast cancer survivors um, right in the store in October during Save Lives to Save Lives promotion to, to sort of drive trial and preference as well. Um, and then an example of those moving billboards, what Bloomies did here is um, take that iconic little brown bag and turn it into the little pink bag, which, um, you know, just spreads that, that word of mouth um, around the cause effort um, beyond the store's four walls. Um, the fourth here is about um, partnership marketing, um, and uh, we've all seen partnership marketing really growing between retailers and consumer products and other non-conflicting and, and complementary partners, um, so from things like Target and their fashion designer partnerships to Nike with Apple um, and others. And, and these can be a huge win for both parties involved. Um, what we're seeing now more and more is um, entering cause into effective partnership marketing strategies can make it um, a win-win-win for all three partners involved. Um, so some of the types of three-way partnerships are um, around a supplier or consumer product or vendor with a retailer um, plus the cause. And the cause can really be driven by either party. Um, in this instance, if it's the consumer product, you know, they can be arming their sales representatives 
um, to leverage the cause to um, get some more um, orders as well as preferred space and that kind of thing. Driven by the retailer, the retailer can bring the cause to um, some preferred vendors and suppliers in exchange for preferred space and that sort of thing. Um, you're also seeing um, a brand plus a media partner in a cause, which is just a great way to get sort of guaranteed um, expanded reach um, to brands that are not conflicting, um, plus a cause to drive cross promotion or cross shopping patterns, um, or a brand plus a sports or entertainment property and a cause to just, again, get that built-in um, group of fans that make sense for a particular target audience. So just a couple examples here. I, I like the um, Good Morning America plus One Warm Coat plus Burlington Partnership. I think each partner gets a ton out of it. You know, it's, it's Goodwill for Good Morning America that can sort of help the national campaign and impact, but they can also, you know, touch down in local key markets um, by driving warm coats to local Burlington. Um, good, the Good Morning America partnership helps get the reach and has gotten celebrities to join the cause and just create a bigger splash. Um, so I think each, each person, each partner brings a lot to it and gets a lot out of it that they really couldn't necessarily do as well without each other. Um, I mentioned the Snickers partnership. They, they, they've done a lot of partnership marketing and weaving the bar from our hunger cause into it with NASCAR. They've also um, partnered with GQ and David Arquette on, on that piece. Um, and the last um, one I'll talk about is um, internal marketing and communications and really activating your employees for the cause. And um, I told you, you know, for these companies, it really is, you know, typically all about the consumer. Um, and in my experience, it's the corp, more corporate cause programs that are that are so focused on employee engagement than the consumer brands in my experience. But more and more, um, consumer brands and retailers are, are, are realizing the importance of employees and associates and other representatives and amplifying the cause for them as well. And so there's sort of a couple of sets of employees to think about here, um, depending on your type of brand. Um, but it really is important to educate and train um, folks on the cause and then incentivize and celebrate their, their action on behalf of the cause. Um, and it'll raise more money, it'll raise more goodwill, um, and, uh, and also provide some really great content um, and um, authenticity to the program. So as a retailer, we're clearly talking about, in a lot of cases, point of sales associates that mouthpiece to consumers. Um, for consumer products, it's those sales reps going out to your retail customers that can be really critical if they're educated and given the tools to talk about the cause and, and the connection with the brand. Um, and then also those corporate employees, you know, folks working on the brand staff at the home office um, that can help spread that word of mouth and increase the impact and offer some content and stories for social media and, and, and PR and other things. Um, just a couple of examples, and then I'll kick it over to Sandra. Um, Walmart and Children's Miracle Network, so this is a, a long-running retailer, you know, cause promotion um, that raises a lot of money for the cause. Um, one simple thing he did to rally employees was just when they implemented a technology that sort of prompted the sales associate um, to ask about the, the, the donation, um, and they added the signage that very clearly prompted the consumer. Um, they raised 42% more year over year just doing that. Um, I think Macy's, um, also I know Macy's did a, a presentation just on this topic last year. Um, they trained their sales associates really brilliantly in conjunction with their nonprofit partners. Um, they have nonprofit partners educate and inspire those associates. They do competitions across stores, across regions for fundraising. Um, but they also sort of walk the talk at the corporate headquarters and have um, volunteer engagement opportunities. It's really seen as a, a culture of ownership of the cause, and, and I know that they've seen in, increased ROI because of it. Um, so with that, 
Um, I'll hand it over to Sandra Hijikata um, that can hopefully uh, bring these trends um, home even further as it relates to their wonderful cause campaign um, that really has smartly, I think, attracted interest, um, particularly from the retailers and the consumer product um, groups. Sandra, take yourself off mute and take it away. <laughs> I have taken myself off mute. Thanks, thanks Ann. And first, I'd like to say it's really been a pleasure for the March of Dimes to work with MSL Group. Um, and it has been uh, for about the last year as we refined this Unborn Key campaign. Um, as you see on the slide, the campaign is really designed with a powerful expression around the potential of children. And it really began with that open construct to set the tone for possibilities. Now, I have to admit, um, I've only been with the March of Dimes for about six months, and um, I, in, I inherited the brainchild and this great idea. And, and I'll have to tell you I would re be remiss if I did not recognize first the March of Dimes, because they decided this was um, an important um, expression for us to drive towards, and that is the potential of children. But I would also be remiss without acknowledging that there was a large team involved in putting this together. Um, Chad Royal Pascal, who's the former Vice President for our Strategic Alliance and Cause Marketing Group, um, led that team and, and recently left the organization. And besides that, there was a strong creative team uh, as well as a sales team and an account management support team that has is, is, that is supported the entire pro process. So clearly, this is um, bigger than um, obviously one person. But if you go if you go back to who we are, the March of Dimes, we've been around 75 years, and we have a very strong history. And that strong history um, um, goes way back to FDR. But more important, that strong his history has always been focused on children, always been focused on mothers, and um, those are the individuals that um, we have related to. Um, so we know that 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 is our group, and uh, so when we started thinking about this program, it we developed it thinking about our corporate partners, and we've had all different sizes and types of corporate partners over the years. Um, we knew that we wanted to use the potential of children um, as our messaging because we knew that consumers appreciated that message. We had seen it in other programs, and they reacted to it when they were um, in stores and, and other um, areas. And we wanted to invite the consumer to engage with brands and brands that we felt that, that we thought they felt were meaningful and we knew were meaningful and actually uh, tied to um, our mission. We really thought it was a perfect opportunity to co-brand and drive all of these various mutual objectives uh, and to raise funds for our uh, critical mission. Um, and we wanted it to have a positive experience engagement with all of the various brands. We picked a very specific time frame between Mother's Day and Father's Day, uh, knowing that there's a lot of shopping that's going on and a lot of interaction and, and opportunities for engagement. Um, so I think what, I, what I'd like to do is uh, move forward and uh, let's go into some of, uh, into some of um, the examples. If you would uh, go to the next slide, please. Okay, I'm not seeing slides move, and I hope I'm the only one that's not seeing slides move. So I am, um, there we go. Um, so th this gives you a snapshot of how robust um, the I'm Born To uh, program was this last year. Uh, we utilized and had available uh, for our partners a whole variety of promotional and other kinds of activities um, from our web hub to print uh, to uh, the development of partner materials, um, emails, digital displays, in-store dis displays, and uh, public service announcements. Um, our partners loved the visibility of the program. And um, they saw it as a significant opportunity for themselves to, uh, for visibility. Um, and they also found that it was an opportunity for activation by utilizing all these various means. Um, it was uh, a particularly great way for our corporate partners uh, to connect uh, what are often comparable missions or somewhat like missions with the March of Dimes. 
um, and those who are in that mother and baby space and to partner with, again, an organization that has 75 years of history and is, uh, is well respected. Um, and as people have told us uh, many times uh, when we're out talking to our corporate partners, how can people say no to wanting to support a project or a program that is uh, uh, about babies and for babies? So um, during this last year, uh, we had um, the best performing campaign that we have had. Um, and given the campaign started in, in 2012, uh, with a more or less soft launch using three partners, uh, this last year we grew significantly to having uh, 13 partners in all, so 10 new partners. Um, through the various uh, um, integrated campaign deliverables, we had more than 1.4 million impressions, and that was uh, during a three-month period. Um, most of our partners uh, decided to offer their promotions during that three-month period, and there are a couple who have extended beyond that uh, because of um, special uh, uh, needs or requirements that they had. Um, we had significant increase in um, uh, to our, our website, our traffic web hub. Um, and the interesting thing, when people went to our, our hub, uh, they didn't necessarily look at the March of Dimes information, but they drove themselves to the individual partners. And uh, we uh, tracked the time frame on which ind individual consumers were on the partner pages. And the number uh, or the time they spent there was um, close to four minutes, which we know is really quite significant. So all in all, we were very pleased with um, how the program um, actually turned uh, uh, out during this uh, 2013 campaign. Uh, if we go to the next slide, uh, what I'd like to do is talk about some of the examples um, of how we worked through the messaging and, and how different partners um, had different uh, purposes and different creative needs. So uh, this first slide um, gives you an example of uh, two of our partners. Um, first, Mud Pie on the left-hand side, um, Udo, uh, became very creative in uh, their messaging. Um, Mud Pie is uh, a small B2B company, uh, fairly small B2B company, and uh, one of the products they sell is um, um, uh, socks for infants or socks for babies. And uh, as you can see from the picture there, they're adorable socks and um, um, everybody who sees them falls in love with them. Um, but it, 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 and unfortunately, you probably cannot read the story. Um, but how much I became interested in uh, being a part of a program is um, someone contacted them and wanted to uh, buy a gift for a baby who was in a NICU. And they realized, given the size of babies who are NICUs, um, sometimes as small as one and two pounds, that the normal uh, socks for a baby do not fit. So Mud Pie uh, decided to, uh, um, uh, actually they designed a sock so that the, the, the person in the uh, NICU had something that they could give. But all of a sudden it got them very, very interested in what can we do to support um, this issue around premature birth. So um, their solution to uh, what they were doing is they told their story in many, many ways, and um, I'll have done it much more eloquently than I just did. But as, as a result, they have decided to give uh, 10 cents uh, for the, from the sale of every single one of their socks um, to support the organization. Um, and in doing, doing so, supporting those babies in the NICUs who might not be large enough uh, to wear a normal size sock, but pre supporting the organization to move forward. So they were really creative um, in how they pulled that story together. And it, it's it, and, and it's a meaningful story and something that their organization and all of the employees within the organization have really wrapped their arms around um, and it is a driver for them. Uh, the second example we have here is uh, an example uh, that was an Oral-B product uh, promotion and um, they were already um, involved in doing a, a promotion for their power brush for Father's Day. And um, since our program wrapped around Father's Day or was ending at Father's Day and it was supporting children, it seems like a great connection to our organization working with Oral-B and um, connecting uh, with uh, parents in um, one of the NICUs in order to, to support moving that, um, that time, frame, time frame forward. Um, so their focus on Power Brush for 
Father's Day, our focus on Father's Day, the power of dad and the importance of dad and how dad is involved um, in um, in, a, in the uh, well bring, the bringing up of a child um, really uh, pulled it all together. And we know mom is the holy grail of shoppers, um, but we know dads um, are also very, very important and um, have an influence in the family. So if you go back to um, Mud Pie, just an example of how they turn this to their benefit, um, during um, the first three months of, the, of their program, they actually had a 23% year-over-year increase in sales of four of their socks, which is um, obviously considerable. And um, Oral-B Father's Day campaign actually also showed an uptick, and that was very successful as well. So you see we had a, a combination uh, of various products that worked well, and we found the creative uh, messaging for that. Our, our second example is around um, uh, <clears throat> supporting how um, programs can be a benefit for consumers. Um, we saw in the various uh, partner uh, relationships uh, that we worked with that depending how a partner activated really had a huge impact on the success of their program and how they felt about the program. So um, in this example with Bonton, and Bonton is um, uh, uh, a retailer that um, is not uh, nationwide, but uh, covers a very wide, uh, very wide uh, footprint across the uh, primarily the, the middle part of the, of, of the country. Um, um, their program um, was really one that incentivized customers um, who online or in their stores uh, purchased a coupon uh, or donated three dollars, and then got ten dollars off on a product. Um, there is no doubt that they had the right consumer hook and that the gift back was really incredibly important. Um, there was a point during that campaign where they ran out of uh, coupons in their stores, um, and so they started double using coupons. So uh, the success of this campaign, um, giving that give back uh, to their consumers and then giving them a benefit um, in, in the, the, um, in the manner of giving a reduction in prices um, had a huge impact. Um, they initially set a $100,000 goal for the time frame of this promotion, meaning between Mother's Day and Father's Day, and ended up raising um, uh, from the sale of um, the coupons as well as the, the, the um, amount of money that came to us from the discounts on sales, uh, raised in excess of uh, $700,000 uh, during uh, a uh, six-week uh, window, uh, a success that they had not seen before in other promotions. So clearly finding the way to have it pay off for the consumers benefited the company and increased sales and ultimately benefited the merchandise. If we go to our next example, uh, we're going to show um, an example of um, what some of our partners did around uh, the look and feel of the campaign. And we're going to go back to Mud Pie, Mud Pie again here um, just because I, it, it is just such a cute, cute, cute picture. Actually, both of these pictures are cute. Uh, but Mud Pie, um, because they, they knew that um, in, the, in the types of stores many of their products are in our, our, our smaller stores that are focused on, on, on products for children, that if they put together a display, and you see an example of the display, um, that um, their eye-catching stock topper really did catch awareness and not only awareness to their product, but it, it helped um, uh, provide an awareness to uh, uh, shoppers to the March of Dimes and our Inborn to campaign. Um, and it drove sales for, um, uh, uh, for Mud Pie, but also for the retail partners with whom they worked for. And um, how, how could you not pass off wanting to touch one of those cute little shoes I'm sorry, cute little socks and wanting to purchase them for the, the baby of your choice. Um, our other partner, our other example here is Kmart, and Kmart has been a 30-year partner with uh, the March of Dimes, so someone that we have worked with uh, for a very, very long time. And uh, we've been very fortunate uh, that March of Dimes during the window of the between Mother's Day and Father's Day, we were uh, working with them on a promotion. Um, they um, obviously uh, put throughout their stores uh, this sign and other signs that promoted the partnership, had a, a wonderful cute picture, again showing a picture of a child 
um, and, and an example of what they are, are born to do, and, and in doing so, uh, really uh, supported of the work that they do. And so they told their story by using our picture, and, and, the, um, and the outcome of that is um, they are continuing to help 4 million babies that are born each year. So great creative, great pictures, all drawing um, the consumer to uh, wanting to become engaged and help the organization. On our next slide, uh, we're going to move into uh, another example of um, how we can push the visual envelope. And, and in this um, example, talk a little bit about uh, another partner we have uh, who is our famous footwear partner. Again, a partner the, Urban, the March of Dimes has had for a few years. And um, this is, I think, an example, uh, again, an example that was supporting their uh, uh, point of sales um, activities. But, um, Famous footwear's colors are not lavender or la are not like purple. And um, they went um, so far as to saying, yes, we can do something unusual within our stores to support the important work of the organization and acknowledge this relationship that we've had for many years. And for um, this particular campaign, they changed their uh, banner, uh, which is always red purple, uh, to try to give it a special notice um, and to try to um, really drive, drive, drive traffic. Um, their uh, program was, um, uh, again, uh, a donation would be made on the, the, the part of the consumer um, for a sale. Um, they, again, sh they actively activated, not only in their stores, uh, but throughout all of their other marketing um, opportunities. And um, as a result, um, actually showed an increase in sales as well. When we move to the next slide, um, we're going to give you another uh, two examples. Um, and the example on the left-hand side is another famous footwear example, uh, which I think shows, uh, going back to the three-way partnering examples that Ann was talking about previously, um, this one is where a retailer uh, plus a product um, is uh, focusing together and uh, benefiting the March of Dimes. Um, I think um, this is a great example of, 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 a, of the three organizations working together uh, to drive a purchase of a product, uh, to have a consumer who's able to make a difference, and um, allowing that to pass through a donation um, to go from Crocs um, um, by their purchases in the famous footwear, footwear stores in order to support the March of Dimes. Um, so um, a, three, a very successful three-way um, opportunity, which ultimately, again, as indicated in the slide, had a significant increase in the year-over-year -year sales for Crocs uh, in the famous footwear stores uh, that had a significant impact uh, um, on our I'm Going To program. On the right-hand side of the page, our second example um, is an example showing the creative work that um, Martha Stewart Living on, on the Media uh, used, um, or how we used uh, uh, Martha Stewart Living on the Media to support um, our many uh, partners. Uh, we were fortunate to um, have a space and uh, some very wonderful visual displays, much like um, the display that is shown here, um, to support the I'm Born To program. Um, our partners had um, Name included in these, uh, the, the retail, uh, I'm sorry, in the displays that were in the magazine and other areas. And um, ultimately, um, um, actually had a, pro a picture of product as well. So um, in, in our insert into um, the print ad, um, each of the partners in the program had their own very special section and um, as a result had a huge, huge visibility given that the Martha Stewart uh, living on the media reach is um, 66 million fans. So um, in every one of the displays, we, every one of the magazines we were in, um, we had um, impact. So we, we had with Martha Stewart living involvement with print, <laughs> social media, digital, um, and um, in some of their uh, television um, uh, promotions and ads as well. Sorry, I have a phone ringing into my room, and hopefully it will stop ringing in a second and will not um, um, 
I wish it was a cell phone. I could just shut it down. There, it's gone. Um, so um, th there was a, a huge benefit for us in uh, partnering here with Mar Martha Stewart uh, Living. And um, Martha Stewart um, Living on the Median is um, now also engaged with our, many of our partners and um, trying to focus on uh, providing them additional benefits in the future, benefits in, in, in the way of, of partnering them with other activities as well. So uh, again, a win-win um, using a media partner, um, using uh, various products, and ultimately the support for the organization. <clears throat> Our last example um, I, um, is, uh, is an example of, this pa of the past program and how um, our program has really partnered up with employees. And uh, we've got two examples that I think are really great examples. One is, um, again, a smaller organization, and then one is um, 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 a very large organization and what we did for that large organization. So the, mud, the folks at Mud Pie knew very, very well that it was important that their staff um, at, at all parts of the organization uh, really understood um, why the connection to March of Dimes and why there was a reason uh, to be engaged in the organization. Uh, they did significant training and, and armed um, their independent sales reps with um, collateral information about the March of Dimes, about this program, um, um, as well as specific information so that when somebody asked why support March of Dimes, um, they knew why. They knew about the story. They knew the genesis of the activity, and were able to, and were able to incorporate that in, 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 into their many activities. <clears throat> the second example, and this example is on the left-hand side, is uh, the work our organization did with Bonton. Um, the March of Dimes is fortunate that we have um, sales staff across, um, not sales staff. We have uh, fundraising staff and program staff and other staff across the entire organization. And not, not in all markets, but in many markets. And um, throughout our program, uh, the program was bonds on during the six weeks and up leading to that six weeks, we engaged in a very significant um, educational program about the March of Dimes and about the program. Um, some of the outreach for that program was made from um, our uh, national um, headquarters uh, with um, our, uh, our consumer, uh, our customer service staff. Uh, but the bulk of those activities were our local staff and local volunteers going in and talking with employees to help them understand the mission of the March of Dimes. So if somebody would ask the question, why support the March of Dimes, um, they, they, they would know why and they would be able to move forward. Um, so again, um, the employees were very engaged. They liked the activities. They liked uh, um, what was going on. And um, it, it was all very, very positive. Um, our next slide, um, if we move to the next slide, it's going to give you a snapshot of what our 2014 I'm Born to campaign is going to look like. You know, it, it was interesting as we went through this last campaign. It was a great campaign. We loved it. But um, we often heard it was missing just a little bit. So we listened to our partners. We listened to our customers um, uh, or the consumers. We listened to the people who weren't engaged in the product. I'm sorry, I'm on a telephone call. She wasn't you Okay, come on. Uh, um, sorry, folks. You try to you try not to pay attention to telephone calls, and you pay attention to tele. What's it going to be like? No, ready. Yeah. Okay. I know. They know I'm on a telephone call. Okay. Sorry, folks. You, yeah. Um. I think I've solved my problem now. Um. Uh, I was double booked and people are looking for me, but they knew I was going to be late, so my apologies. So um, again, this is a snapshot of um, this year's uh, I'm Born To campaign. Um, great. Uh, so we, we still have I'm Born To, uh, but we've changed the look and feel to make it even connect even more to mothers and fathers uh, because that's the time period of our program. And um, we are all also acknowledging the um, involvement of um, um, or, or thanking our thanking our moms and dads, as well as thanking our retail partners uh, in support of this very important program. Um, you can see by looking at the slide, you can see the emotional connection between the the, the baby and the mother. 
um, and we've got uh, what we think is a very strong call to action. And uh, we are um, really pleased as we are going out and talking to new potential partners to see, um, yes, people are very engaged and uh, very excited about um, the direction in the organization. Um, and um, seeing the successes that we've had in the last year, um, it's been uh, very positive moving forward. And now that we've uh, continued to listen to our partners and listening to those who didn't partner with us, we think we'll have an even stronger program uh, this next year in, and we'll be able to work with our partners so that they can um, help tell their story by working with us and helping us, they can tell their mission um, by you working with us and helping us tell their story. So all in all, I think very positive. I think we're probably ready to turn it back to see if there are any potential questions. Megan, um, I, I think uh, for folks that have questions, um, just use your message box, um, and Megan will voice them. <laughs> Did we lose Megan? I don't know. I don't see. I... <laughs> Because Megan is the only one that can see the question. That's right. Sorry, I've been talking this whole time and I've double muted myself, so I didn't realize that. Sorry, and I've asked you, the, I've asked you a question twice now, and I thought, why is she not hearing me? Sorry, I'm here. Um, we're getting a lot of questions about the first one, just just logistical. Yes, you will all get a copy of this webinar and recording and the slides, so there's nothing you need to do. Check your email for that. Um, first question, I think, is for you, Anne. This came in during your remarks. Is there any research methodology available for possible brand alignments for a cause when you're looking for, you know, you have a nonprofit partner and you're looking for brand alignments. Any any tips or methodologies there you can share? Um, absolutely. Um, I mean, we have at MSL Group our purple process, our purpose plus people process, which, um, yeah, it includes um, a lot of uh, research on the brand and what the brand stands for. Um, you've got to also look at what your objectives are. So uh, folks have different objectives, whether it truly is about driving sales or if, it, if it's more about reputation and then who your target audiences are. Um, and then we go forth and do um, research on um, the causes and the social issues that are um, out there. Um, and we typically are looking for um, issues that are trending in some way, shape, or form um, that have some alignment with either the brand, as I said, the, the target audience, the business, um, or just that equity. Um, uh, or, or personality even, and um, and then we look at competitors as well and make sure that there's a, a differentiating white space. Um, so we have a whole process that goes along with it that um, you know I'd be happy to chat with anybody about. Um, but it, it it takes a lot of internal research and then um, external marketplace research as well. Thank you, Anne. We're getting a lot sure. of questions about budgets and fees and, and one of the common questions is you know can you talk just maybe generally I don't know how much you're going to want to reveal this is probably for Sandra but can you talk generally about um, what companies had to do to become part of of I'm born to is it always a guaranteed donation plus some in-kind work could it potentially be in-kind are you exclusive by category Oh, those are lots. That's a, that's a lot of a lot of questions. So, um, <laughs> uh, and and that is a question that we are continuing to involve evolve with. So last year, um, actually, all of our partners um, had um, um, had the same disability. It didn't matter if they were 
a, a million dollar partner or if they were a fifty thousand dollar partner. And so we we learned some things this last year and are moving into a a, 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 a system that will be doing much greater differentiation between uh, what we will have as being four uh, four levels of partnerships um, uh, to um, two overarching large, larger um, levels and then two a specific cost marketing levels that are lower lower levels. So um, um, right now, um, or in the past, we have not had any exclusive um, ex exclusivity. Um, but at our top level um, for the cost, cost marketing next year, we'll have exclusivity with three within three uh, with, um, within three competitors. But not more than three competitors. Um, but um, th that is that is a piece that we're still working through. Um, we uh, tried to get all of uh, the commitments at least one hundred thousand uh, dollars moving forward, and um, uh, we did ask for guarantees. Um, but the the, guarant the guarantees came in a variety of different ways depending on the type of program that we had. So we. We try to be cognizant of the needs of the um, of the partner and try to work within frameworks. Um, um, but I, I think we learned a, a bit this next year, and we're trying to put a, a little bit more structure into that moving forward. But I expect that we'll have some. Uh, uh, we we have created some black and white, but we do expect that we'll have some gray areas. Yeah, I think the beauty of it, um, Sandra, is with the model is that there's there's multiple points of entry. So um, for dependent on what budgets um, are available and then what the company's objectives are and what sort of benefits they're interested in. So there is some flexibility there and, and some different levels for different we know that all no two companies are created equal. So <laughs> there's companies of all different shapes and sizes. So I think there's some flexibility. Awesome, thanks. We've got a couple more logistical questions. One about timing. How far in advance do you work with a retailer to determine in-store signage, promotions, before it actually appears in stores? And this would be kind of a typical scenario question, not you know down to the letter. You know, I think it, it depends on um, on the company. Um, an example with our with us with Kmart, for for example, or this last year campaign, we were um, uh, taking pictures and putting the creative together. Uh, in the November December time frame for a launch um, in May, and that's, yeah. that's probably our longer lead. Some of our other, uh, some of the other companies um, are a little bit uh, smaller, but just given the size of their footprint, that one took much longer. Yeah, I would just add that that large retailers yeah, are typically locking in plans about six months in advance. The smaller ones are a little bit more nimble. Great, thank you. There was a question, somebody recognized that Farmers Insurance is one of the sponsors, and I believe this was for the Unborn 2 campaign, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, the question is, how do you integrate non-retail partners into this type of campaign? That's a really tough question. Um, you know, um, <laughs> I was going to say, you want me to take that one? <laughs> uh, yeah, you can. Yes, you can take that one because uh, I have to admit I'm not sure we did a great job of integrating farmers into the campaign. Um, it was it was hard, and um, there were specific messaging, um, and it, it really it, it, it it's up to how the partner wants to message it. So, um, yes, and if you have something specific on that, I would love for you to take that question. Yeah, I think for farmers, um, they had a long-standing relationship um, with the March of Dimes and, and loved the partnership, and then they fell in love with the Unborn 2 message and creative and the freshness and sort of modern element of it. Um, and I think what they tried to do is weave it into some local community events and such that they had, as well as employee communications. Um, those were important pieces to them. Um, and I think, you know, to Sandra's point, um, next year we do want to open it up. You know, if this is a very clear campaign running Mother's Day, Father's Day, high traffic, high shopping um, time frame. It's a clear campaign for consumer products and retailers. But I think um, moving forward, we want to make sure that there's some flexibility in the model for some of those um, 
other types of companies that may be interested and have different objectives um, to get enough fresh content, emotionally relevant content that's going to be um, of interest to, to their targets as well. Great. Thank you both so, so much. We are out of time, but just appreciate Anne and Sandra, all of your great insights and content and sharing these great case examples today. I know from our perspective at the Cause Marketing Forum, it's sometimes hard to get companies to share particularly that ROI data. So appreciate you sharing some of these great, great case studies, Sandra, um, and just all of the work that you put into this presentation. So thanks also to everyone who joined us today. Upon exiting, exiting, you will get a very, very short survey. Please take a moment, just let us know how we can do a better job on these webinars for you and any content that might be of interest to you. And on behalf of the Cause Marketing Forum and MMSL Group and Sandra at the March of Dimes, we'd like to thank you so so, so much for joining us today, and we hope to see you at next month's webinar. Thanks again. Thanks, everyone.